Hello, and welcome to St. Louis Cathedral and our celebration of ordination to the diaconate. So that our prayer will not be needlessly disturbed, we ask that you turn off any cell phones. Also, since there is a professional photographer, we ask that you do not leave your pews at any times uh, for, for photographs and at all times to refrain from flash photography. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, which is found in your worship aid. Sing with all the saints in glory.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Archbishop Hughes and Bishop Cherie join me in welcoming you to our celebration today. We come together as the local church, but also connected, obviously, to the universal church as we celebrate God's call to five men to ordain ministry and specifically this morning to be ordained as deacons of the church. I welcome all of you very warmly, a special welcome to our deacons and our priests and the religious and all those who come in service to the church as well as all of you as God's people. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, we come before the Lord acknowledging, first of all, our weakness and our sin, Giving that over to the Lord, we ask for his gift of mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sin, and bring us to the kingdom of everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, be serious and sober-minded so that you will be able to pray. Above all, let your love for one another be intense because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. As each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever preaches, let it be with the words of God. Whoever serves, let it be with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit that we remain, so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This 
I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Sylvester Odaba Adagu Adaga. Luis Carlos Duarte Gonzalez. Casiana Dennis Obianu. Luis Carlos Valencia Osorio. <clears throat> John Daniel Yike. <clears throat> Most Reverend Father. Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. For the young, thank you for your ministry as vocation director, which you fulfill in a very positive way for our archdiocese. And also, I thank you for the testimony that you give on behalf of many that these men have been found worthy to serve the church in ordained ministry as deacons. We're very grateful to you, to those who work with you in the vocation ministry, also to Father Wainer and to the faculty of Notre Dame Seminary, and to all of those priests and deacons and religious and laity who have worked with them and helped to prepare them. Thank you very much for that testimony. Therefore, relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. In life, each of us has a story. And that story began in the womb. And for these five men, their stories are very, very different from one another. Yet deeply embedded in each of their story is an experience of Jesus calling them, come, follow me, serve my people lead them, shepherd them. Today we're very mindful that others have awakened that call. God uses others. God does the calling and then uses others to awaken that call. For Sylvester, his burning desire for ordained ministry was planted by family and neighbors at a very early age. And also his pastor fostered that call. For Luis Duarte Dominga, who was in hospice, her faith awakened God's call in his heart. For Dennis, it was the love and example of his grandmother and great admiration for his pastor. For Luis Valencia, it was his time in boarding school he met a priest that greatly inspired him as a man of service. 
And for John Yike, it was hearing John Paul II in his visit to New Orleans saying, be not afraid. For each and every one of these men, their stories are personal and they are sacred. And you and I have the privilege to be a part of that story as we gather here this morning. But in each of their stories, it includes God's call and their yes, which leads, of course, to this great day of diaconate ordination. We also want to express our gratitude to others who have been a part of that story and who have helped to awaken the call. First of all, to their parents, those here present and those deceased, those who cannot be here today, those who are perhaps joining us by live stream, and those here today who represent their parents. To parents, we thank you because you have given your son not only the gift of life, but also you have loved them through life and you have shared with them the gift of faith, which makes today possible. We also express our gratitude to other members of the family for your love and example. Gratitude to friends and co-workers and classmates who have encouraged the vocation and helped these men know God's call more deeply. And those who have helped them to discern and to be open to seminary formation, especially the faculty and the rector and the staff at Notre Dame Seminary. Today we humbly give thanks to God for all of these people that he has used in a very positive way to awaken that call. My brothers, for you, this story includes times when you were confused and scared to say yes, and it looked oh ever so complex. Then on those other days, as part of your story, the desire was a wholehearted yes. But for each of you, that story is sacred and unique. We are privileged to be a part of that story today and a part of your life as you say yes to God and to his people, the church. My friends, we're very mindful that what we are doing here today is rooted in the Acts of the Apostles, which we heard as the first reading, which describes what happened almost 2,000 years ago, shortly after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. The apostles were sent by the risen Christ to shepherd his people, to serve them, to love them, to lead them, and they quickly became overwhelmed. They were amazed at the incredible needs of God's people, all that they were being asked to do and all that they were being asked to become. And they committed themselves to prayer and to preaching. But in doing that and reflecting on their ministry, they felt that they were neglecting the everyday needs of the people in order to lead others in prayer and to preach the word of God. And they felt in particular that they were not showing leadership in the charity of Christ that he certainly wanted. And so they said that they needed help. They needed help and so they turned to others. And as we see in that first reading, they chose seven men that they would ask to serve at table, not that they would teach them to be waiters, but it's an image of humility and an image of charity. And they called seven men after prayer and discernment. Seven men who were of great faith, men who were respected by the community and saw in them the qualities of leadership. And then they prayed over them. And they laid on hands. They called down the gift of the Holy Spirit. And these seven men were sent forth as men of charity, co-workers in the vineyard of the Lord, specifically to serve the church as deacons. The word deacon means from the Greek, serving God by caring for others in humility, in great service. And so what we're doing today finds its roots over 2,000 years ago. And we do exactly the same thing. 
Today we celebrate the fact that our loving God has called these five men, and they have said, I believe that I am called. It's deeply ingrained in my heart. And now the church, through formation and discernment, affirms that call. We say, yes, we too believe that God has called you. The same qualities today are asked of men to serve as deacons as were 2,000 years ago. They must be men of faith. They must know Jesus personally and intimately. They must be respected by the community, and they must be humble enough to serve at table and to pour out their lives for the good of others. And just as we heard in the Acts of the Apostles, in a few moments I will have the privilege to pray over them, to call down the gift of the Spirit by the laying on of hands, and in that prayer, they become deacons of the church. And for this we are grateful. Because Jesus has promised that he would always provide leaders and shepherds for his church. And we see in these men and in their story that that promise of Jesus has been fulfilled and is still taking place in 2019. We are mindful as we gather here that the ministry of the deacon has a threefold ministry. First, my brothers, and most importantly, you are to be the human face of Christ, particularly the charity of Christ. You are to show us Jesus who is that man and that Messiah of charity. We know that all baptized Catholics through our baptism, we are called to be people of charity. As we heard in today's gospel, as Jesus says, my command is that you love one another. May I suggest to you that deacons lead the church in charity. You show us how to care for others in the name of Christ. And you point out to us those who are in need of the love of Christ and the love of his people. So where will you be? Where those who are in most in need, they're longing for Christ, they're longing for an inclusion in our church. And in so doing, you must be, in a sense, the conscience of the church. You have to remind us, these are the people who need you. These are the people who need to see the face of Christ as the man of charity. And you will do that as you reach out. And remind us never to forget the poor, the needy, the hopeless. For example, the homeless on our streets, the victims of human trafficking, those on death row, those who are hurt by racism, and the immigrant. They will be a part of your serving at table and reminding us to be there for them. And this is the first priority of your ministry. And secondly, as a deacon, you will be the voice of Christ in teaching and in preaching. After you are ordained and in this celebration, you will be given the book of the gospel. And as I give you that book, I will say to you, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. And then you will be exhorted. Believe what you read in the gospel. Teach what you believe. Preach what you believe. And practice what you teach. A very, very serious responsibility. As you will proclaim the gospel at liturgy, and then you will break open the word of God. You will help people understand how that word in the gospel and in the other scriptures can give meaning and direction to their lives. You apply God's message to who they are in their journey. And in order to do that, my brothers, you will not only have to pray and read the gospel, but you will have to prepare, never preach, without prayer and preparation. And don't ever tempt God by saying, well, oh, I'll just wing it. We don't wing it. We prepare and we pray because God's people are hungry for his word and they have a right to the richest of food. And God wants you and me to preach his word and we have to make sure that in our preaching we never ever get in his way of the word. 
read the Gospels, believe what you read, teach and preach what you believe, and practice what you teach, and when you do not practice what you preach, we admit our own weakness and sin as leaders of the church, our own inconsistencies, and we ask God to heal that. Thirdly, as a deacon, you will lead others in prayer. You will assist the priest at Mass. You will feed others with the body and blood of Christ. You will bring communion to the sick and the dying. You will baptize. You will witness marriages. You will bury the dead and give consolation to the grief, and give consolation to those who are in grief. Yes, you will lead others in prayer. In this threefold ministry, my brothers, to be a man of charity, to not only preach the word of God, but to be that word, to lead others in prayer, a lot is asked of you. And we want to impress upon you that a lot is asked of you. How can you fulfill this ministry? May I suggest that there are three ways. One, stay close to the Lord Jesus in prayer. Today, you not only commit yourself for the rest of your life to praying the Liturgy of the Hours for the world, for the church, those entrusted to your pastoral care, but you have to do even more than that. It is that quiet moment, quiet time every day of solitude with the Lord, alone with him, that you will come to know Jesus, the man of charity, that you will come to know him, stay close to him. Secondly, you will be able to fulfill this ministry if you live out the promise of obedience that you make today. What you're saying in that promise is not a promise to me personally. It's a promise to Christ and to the church that you will do whatever the church needs you to do, and it may not be your preference. And I dare say that in your lifetime, I or one of my successors will ask you to do something and you'll say, Ugh, do I have to? And that's when obedience is tested. Thirdly, that you will live a life of celibacy. We as church certainly value the sacrament of marriage. We value it as a true sacrament, a sign of God's love that coming together a man and wife in holy matrimony. But you have said that you are willing to remain single, not to be married, in order to give your entire life to the ministry of Christ, that you have no other responsibility whatsoever except to be a minister of the church. You are not a bachelor. You are committed to Christ and to the church. You are married to the church, and you are a man of charity for Christ. My brothers, today you will receive a new title, a deacon. You will receive vestments to be worn for liturgy. You will have a place in the sanctuary. You will be able to go out among God's people and to be there for them and to serve them and to love them. Take your title and your vestments and your place in the sanctuary as a sign of humility. You are never to separate yourself from the people. Never be an elite class or the privileged class. You are the servant of God's people. And on those days when we're not sure whether or not we're living up to what God is asking of us in diaconate ministry, remember the words of Jesus and ask yourself this question. I have come to serve and not to be served. When we expect to be served, we ins when we expect that entitlement, we cease to be the servant of Christ. My brothers, we are here today and we are privileged to be here today because we are part of your story and we are grateful. And we will continue to support you as your story unfolds in your diaconate ministry, and God willing, in priestly ministry.
My brothers, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mysteries of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and in deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? <clears throat> My brothers, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment of celibacy as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and in service to God and humanity? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your life always to the example of Christ of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Sylvester, do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Luis, do you promise obedience and respect to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dennis, do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Luis, do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. John, do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the order of the diaconate. Please stand. Pio of 
Pietralcina, pray for us. Saint Bonaventure, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, Pray for us, Lord be merciful, Lord deliver us, we pray, from all evil, Lord deliver us, we pray, from every sin, Lord deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death, Lord deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministry through Christ our Lord.
To draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age. You order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned and manifold with heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the formal tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of the church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and to preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to those chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord. Look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, O Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace, by the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by their example and their way of life they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sylvester, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Luis, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Dennis, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, 
teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Luis, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. John, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
My sisters and brothers, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and to strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed, with your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with St. Louis, King of France, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, be pleasing, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our bishop, with the order of bishops, these your servants, whom have been ordained today as ministers for your church, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
sabes bien lo que tengo en mi barca no hay oro ni espadas tan solo redes y mi trabajo Señor Dicho mi nombre en la arena, he dejado mi marca junto a ti. Buscaré otro más. No, and you knew what my boat can. Oh.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and for the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our sincere gratitude to all of you for being here today. We would like to recognize in a particular way the families of those who have been ordained as deacons. For those who are here, their birth parents, perhaps their U.S. parents, their grandparents, brothers and sisters in their family, and those who are joining us through live stream, we also thank you. I would ask all the members of the family and extended family of our newly ordained to please stand. And we thank you for allowing God to use you to awaken the vocation and to foster their vocation to holy orders. There are a number of other, please be seated, there are a number of other people I would like to thank, and it's a little bit of a litany, so I would ask you to hold your applause until the end. First of all, to Father Philip Landry, the rector of St. Louis Cathedral and our cathedral staff, thank you for your ministry and also for the warm hospitality that is always offered to us here at the cathedral. To Father Nile Gross, who is the Director of the Office of Worship, to Betty Ann Hickey, to our Masters of Ceremony here today, and to all those who assist in the work of the Office of Worship. To our liturgical ministers who served in this celebration, to our readers, our servers, the seminarians, the ministers of hospitality, a very special thank you to our cathedral choir and musicians under the direction of Drew Montague. You always help us to praise God with wonderful joy and song, and you certainly did that today. To all those on the staff of Notre Dame Seminary, especially to Father Wayne, the rector. Also, again, to Father Kurt Young, who serves as the vocation director. To our director of seminarians, Father Billy O'Riordan, and Father Gil Martin, also to Mary Morgan. We want to thank those who support vocations by their prayers and by their resources, the Serens, the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Peter Claver, the Catholic Foundation, and the Marians. We thank all of you. And also, I thank my brother priests and my brother deacons, and also the religious. Your life of witness, your life of service to God's people is an example to these men whom we have just ordained. Thank you for being there for them by your example, by your encouragement, by your prayers, you have helped this day become a reality. Please join me in thanking all of these people. As we have noticed, those who have been ordained, we look to those who will be ordained, those who are discerning God's call. And I would ask all seminarians here present and all novices or postulants to please stand so that we can recognize you and pray that God will continue to guide you. On such a beautiful occasion, when five men have said yes to God's call to service in the church, specifically as deacons, we can't help but ask the question, who else in our archdiocese is being called to follow in their footsteps and to answer a call to priestly ministry? Perhaps we can ask a more specific question, who is present here today in this congregation? whom God is calling to serve as a priest in the future or a religious sister or brother. Certainly there's someone here who is being called. And there are many others beyond in various parishes who are being called to serve the church in leadership as a priest or religious sister or brother. I ask you to join me in a daily prayer for them. First of all, that they will hear the call. 
Secondly, that they will have the courage to open their hearts and say yes. And please pray for their parents, their friends, their families, their co-workers, that all of those people that surround them will be a word of encouragement. We know that God in 2019 continues to call people to leadership, to serve the church. It is up to us to pray for them, to hold them up, and those who are being called to please respond to that call. There will be a reception, and all of you are invited to join us at the Ursuline Convent on Charter Street. And also for those who would like to ride there, there will be a bus at the corner of Charter Street and St. Peter Street, which will bring you directly over to the convent. And now I would ask the newly ordained, the newly ordained deacons to please come forward. I'm glad to see you're still carrying that book. <laughs> it has been a privilege for us, my brothers, to be a part of your story, a part of your journey, and to be able to witness that call of God being confirmed through this ordination rite as you have received the gift of the Spirit by the laying on of hands and prayer you go forth now as deacons of the church and our local church and beyond will be enriched by your ministry by your giving of yourself in such a dedicated way we're very grateful for your yes and as we send you forth please know of our prayers our love and our support please join me in thanking them We also thank so many of you who have been a part of that journey and also those who will be as they go into various parishes to serve as deacon interns to the priest and deacons who will supervise them and also to the laity who work with them, particularly those of you in lay ministry. Please guide them and please help them to be the very best that they can be in order to serve God's people. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.